Tsar Nicholas II, he was the last Tsar of Russia before the Communist Revolution. It was a time of danger and turmoil, especially for his family, so in his fear and desperation, he turned to an unusual source for comfort. An alcoholic homeless dude named Grigory Rasputin. Rasputin was like a self-proclaimed monk, often called the Mad Monk, and they said that he had mystical powers. He could heal the sick, predict the future. He had eyes that burn their way into your soul. And apparently he had a giant schlong. That's not relevant. As his influence over the royal family grew, so did the contempt for him amongst the nobles. And in December of 1916, a group of them led by Prince Felix Yusupov conspired to assassinate him. This was not going to be as easy as they thought. The plan was to lure Rasputin to the prince's palace and then poison him with cyanide-laced cakes and wine, which Rasputin eagerly devoured, and it did nothing to him. So they dispensed with the subtle route and just straight up shot him four times. Still didn't kill him. At this point, they were getting frustrated, so they each grabbed a club and proceeded to beat the crap out of him into a bloody pulp on the floor. Yeah, still not dead. Finally, they just tied up his hands and feet, rolled him up in a carpet, and dumped him in the River Neva. When his body washed ashore a few days later, they found that he had actually managed to escape his ropes and get out of the carpet before he did finally drown. Rasputin's stubborn unwillingness to die has become the stuff of legend, and it's often attributed to his, his mysticism. There's a metaphysical context usually applied to it, but there are many stories out there of people who have endured similar traumas, or worse, and lived to tell the tale. Last week we got Dark AF talking about how a severed head could possibly remain conscious after being decapitated from the body, which somehow became a gigantic hit. One of the biggest videos I've ever done. Sickos. But let's go the other direction this week and talk about just how much damage the human body can attain and just keep on balling. Just a quick disclaimer, and I shouldn't have to say this, but don't try any of this at home. These are extreme examples of human endurance. The reason they're noteworthy is because in no way should these people have survived. So don't go all thinking you're immortal and jump in front of a bus or something. Again, I shouldn't have to say that, but Tide Pods. Also, fair warning, some of the details here, not for the squeamish. Number five on our list today is Todd Endress. Todd's story is amazing not just because of the injuries he sustained, but also just how he managed to survive. Todd was a surfer from California, and in 2007, the thing that all surfers fear the most happened. He got attacked by a great white shark. The shark attacked him from the hind, getting hold of his back and tearing the skin. In Todd words, quote, like a banana peel. Dude got peeled like a banana. He clung to a surfboard for dear life as the shark came back around again. He was bleeding all over the water. The shark this time managed to bite on top of both him and the surfboard. Luckily, because he was holding the surfboard to his stomach, the bites did not perforate his stomach, but it did do more damage to his back. The shark then grabbed a hold of his leg and tried to tear that off, but he was able to free it by kicking at the shark's eyes and nose with his other foot, which eventually got the shark to go away. This, by the way, is exactly what you're supposed to do if you get attacked by a shark, so it does work. This bought him a little bit of time, but he was still pretty far from shore and he was losing blood, so things were still looking pretty grim. But then he got saved by, and apparently this is true, a herd of dolphins. A dozen or so dolphins swam up and encircled Todd, swimming around him, splashing in the water and deterring the shark, just giving him enough time to swim to shore and get some help. He survived. It took many months of painful rehab, but he did make a full recovery. Number four is Dante Atullo. Dante Atullo was building a shed in his backyard in Chicago when the nail gun misfired and bounced off the side of his head just above his ear. It bled a little bit. It didn't really hurt that much, so he kind of just kept doing his thing. He finished his work. He even did a little bit of snow plowing and didn't bother to go to a doctor about it until he woke up the next morning feeling really nauseous. The doctor decided to do an x-ray of his head just to be safe, and he came back and showed him this. Dante actually started laughing when he saw this because he thought the doctor was playing a prank on him. Because, you know, doctors and their crazy pranks. Turns out the nail came millimeters from hitting his motor cortex, which would have left him paralyzed for life at best, dead for worst. And in case you're wondering how the hell he couldn't have felt a three and a half inch nail in the middle of his head, it's because we actually don't have sensory neurons in our brains. So if he by some miracle misses any major arteries, which it apparently did in this case, the only place you would actually feel it is right there on the side of your head. The doctors removed it by making holes on either side of where it entered the skull and removed the nail and took out a piece of skull with it and covered it with a titanium mesh. It was a two hour long operation, but Dante made a full recovery and suffered no ill effects from his experience. Number three is Andrew Lin. 
If you ever feel like there's no good luck for you in this world, blame this guy. Because he took a lot of it. Andrew had already had a few brushes with death. He was an Iraq war vet. He guarded military convoys over there and had already dealt with the explosions of some anti-personnel mines as well as IEDs. But he managed to come out of that unscathed. He came home and then in 2008 got hit by a drunk driver driving at 75 miles an hour. He somehow managed to survive that crash with a little neck injury that was easily corrected with minor surgery. So yeah, already a pretty lucky guy, but this was just the appetizer before the entree of holy sh**. On the night of November 29th, 2010, Andrew got a little bit hungry, decided to go out for a burger, and on the way, he fell asleep and drove off the road into a chain link fence. Upon hitting the fence, the two inch diameter pipe at the top of the fence broke loose, went through his windshield, and went through his mouth. <coughs> The pole went through his neck, exited out the back, pinning him to the seat and preventing him from moving. He remained conscious when the paramedics arrived and was even trying to text on his phone while they were cutting the bar loose to set him free. He even walked over to the ambulance on his own. Once at the hospital, the doctors took great care to remove the pipe. They had to give him a tracheostomy so that they could secure his breathing. They even had to pour cold water, ice cold water, down into the pipe while they cut it so that it wouldn't overheat and hurt his organs. They were concerned, of course, that the jagged edges on the pipe might nick an artery and cause some massive bleeding, but they were able to get it out without that happening. Somehow, this thing went through his neck without hitting his jugular or his carotid arteries. Andrew lost several teeth that had to be replaced and his jaw was wired shut for a while, which took a lot of rehabilitation to get back into the swing of things. But uh, yeah, he made a full recovery. The lesson here is if you're super tired and you want a burger, call Uber Eats. Number two is Peng Shilin. Peng Shilin is only 78 centimeters tall. That has not always been the case. Peng was a cop in the Shenzhen province of China when in 1995, a freight truck ran over him and sliced him in half. Sliced him in half. There are pictures online of the accident if you really want to go check them out. I will not share it here, but yeah, there's pictures. Somehow he managed to not bleed out at the scene. He was rushed to a hospital where he spent two years while doctors rerouted almost every single major organ and system in his body. Over time, he was able to build up strength in his arms and figure out how to take care of himself. He even managed to walk again through the use of this device that the hospital built that's basically like an egg cup with two bionic legs attached. He even went on to become a successful businessman and opened a bargain supermarket that he called, and I'm not making this up, the Half Man Half Price Store. Keep your eyes out for the lawsuit from Tyrion Lannister. And the last on this list is a certified badass of the highest order, Lieutenant General Sir Adrian Carton de Wart. Sir Adrian DeWart was born into Belgian nobility in 1880, but despite the opportunity to live a life of luxury and travel and nothing but fun, he decided he wanted to fight for a living. As a teenager, he was sent to boarding school in England, where he lied about his age to serve in the British forces in the Second Boer War in South Africa. There he was shot twice, once in the groin and one in the stomach, before he was sent home. He continued serving the British military despite his parents' protests, uh, first in South Africa and then in India, and then when World War I broke out, he was one of the first people to sign up to fight first in Africa. In an attack at an enemy fort in Shimber Barris, which is in modern-day Somalia, he was shot twice in the face, losing an eye and part of an ear. Now, most people at this point might be thinking, okay, I've been shot four times in two battles, that's enough for me. It wasn't enough for him. He basically just went on a tour through Europe, making sure to get mutilated every place he went. While serving on the Western Front, he was shot in his hand, and famously, when the doctor refused to amputate his fingers, he bit them off himself. He got shot through both the skull and the ankle at the Battle of the Somme, through the hip at the Battle of Passchendaele, through the leg at Cambrai, and through the ear, again, at Arras. When asked later about his World War I experience, he said, quote, Frankly, I had enjoyed the war. After the war, he served a British mission in Poland, supporting their conflicts with the Soviet states, where a plane he was in crashed, and he was taken prisoner of war. He was later released. When World War II broke out, after probably squealing with joy because he was a maniac, he served the British military and was shot down over the Mediterranean. Guess what? He survived that. Managed to escape the sinking plane, swam to shore where he was captured by the Italians and put into a prisoner of war camp where he spent seven months digging a tunnel to escape, which he successfully did and managed to evade capture for eight days while posing as an Italian peasant in the Italian countryside. He was later recaptured, but as a high-ranking officer and probably a major pain in the ass to the Italians, he was traded back to the English in a deal. 
After the war, he became an envoy to China, working one-on-one -on -one with Winston Churchill, and then he later retired to the Irish countryside, where he died peacefully in his sleep in 1963 at the age of 83 years old. Top that! Actually, no, don't, don't try to top that. Now, those are just five situations. Obviously, there are many, many other crazy stories of human survival that probably deserve a video all to themselves. But if you have a favorite, please feel free to share that in the comment below. I want to thank Jason Forbes for his help putting this video together. He's got an awesome channel himself called J Theory. You might enjoy it. Link right here. And if you're new to this channel, you might not know I do have a little side business that I like to promote on here from time to time. It's called Canker Boy. It's specifically for people who get regular uh, canker sores and mouth ulcers. Uh, it's a simple pill that you take every day. It helps prevent them with about 75% success rate. A lot of people have been helped out. If you have this problem or you know somebody that does, you can go to cankerboy.com. Check it out for yourself. Please like and share this video if you liked it and if this is your first time here. Uh, please feel free to check out some of my other videos. I do videos on fun random topics like this on Thursdays, more sciencey topics on Mondays, and if you like those, please do subscribe. All right, I thank you guys for watching. Have a good rest of the week and I will see you here next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.